Hey, what's up guys, it's Fish here and welcome back to the next installment of my Borderlow campaign for Total War Warhammer. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the new free LC. Let me know in the comments down below if you're enjoying it, what you like, what you don't like. So I'd be interested to see how you guys are reacting to the new free LC. Uh, when we last left off, we were put, making a pretty big push down south against Astalia. We managed to take out their capital, which was great news. However, that does now mean we are in striking range of Tilia, and they did start to move some of their fleets over, which is a little bit scary because as you guys can see they do have a ton right, more soldiers ready to start sailing and I'm kind of hoping they don't because it'd be nice if we could just take out the Talian fleet right here because if you guys remember oh, no. with our trident we get bonuses at sea we get plus uh, 12 melee attack at sea in the lord's army so that's great so we might try and use that and just try and hit them at sea uh, obviously it depends what the enemy do there with their fleets but we can we can find that out as well as that, we are making a shit ton of money. We're making almost two grand right now. And even <laughs> and especially if we start taxing Musalon. I can't believe I forgot about that. You guys were yelling at me last episode. I think for the past two episodes maybe to start actually taxing them. So hopefully that makes you guys happy. We are going to have to spend a little bit of money to pick up that. Uh, which will give us, uh, I guess, a happy... Well, I guess we don't really need to though. If we look at it, that will make the province happy. But I'm only losing minus one. Like... That's not really a lot of unhappiness. Like, that's going to take 70 turns to, you know, technically to become unhappy. So, I'm kind of okay with just losing a little bit of happiness there, if I'm honest. We're also building a stable down south so we can kind of rearm uh, Albrecht's army. And I might also build a second army because, again, if they come over and rush me with, what, two and a half stacks, I don't know if I'll be able to defend this, especially because hey, Albrecht's army isn't fully strengthened. We can pick up some battle pilgrims, which have really good morale. If we compare these guys to the men at arms, uh, I did not mean to do that. If we can uh, combine, uh, compare, sorry, these guys to the men at arms, you can see they have almost 3,000 more HP, 31 morale, which is insane. That's almost like an extra half of their morale. Uh, extra more melee attack less melee defense but you know they have more weapon strength like overall these guys are much better they do cost almost double but you know my units aren't really that expensive if i'm honest oh okay maybe not they're not that much better health wise it's just because this unit's kind of depleted i should have done that really so they have 400 more health but i mean the morale is kind of the main thing i'm looking at here because the melee defense isn't really too bad but I mean, like, yeah, I mean, I might just pick some of these guys up just to, just in case they do decide to siege me out here. Because we do have to kind of be careful. We don't really want to get sieged out. How's the garrison looking here as well? Because next turn we will have it. We will have uh, Iron Mine and the Stable done. So maybe we'll just wait till then. And I might just build another army up here. Um, or I'm, if I'm going to build an army there, I might as well just build it in my capital and send it down. So then we get trebuchets and stuff. So let's build up a small army here, like a, a smallish army. Just with some, like, elite units, I think. Just put them inside the city, and then let's pick up some, some eat, just some cheap units. So we'll pick up some, what, fire archers? Yeah, some peasant bowmen. We'll also pick up a trebuchet, maybe two. Um, and I'm not sure how that's going to affect our peasant economy. So that's all I'm going to build for now, because uh, I want to see if if these trebuchets count as a peasant unit or not. Because it'd be great to actually have these uh, these trebuchets in Albrecht's army. Then we'll have to, obviously have to do some re uh, some some like restructuring in his army so let's end the turn now that we are we are actually taxing Muslon is always good what do you want Corscon you want I don't want to join your goddamn wars I really really don't Marienberg Marienberg are just moving up their bright wizard to I guess harass so you're moving up some generals which is fine oh yeah you're moving your armies for sure Okay, cool. So here's the question. Do we sally out and smash this army? If we do, we will have one turn, I think, to, to rebuild. We'll be able to build a shit ton of cavalry because we have that there now. But we'll have to be very, very careful. Hmm, this, is a, this is a hard question. Like, what, the what is the balance of power? If we move the paladin in, we, we can't assault, can we? No. So we'll move the paladin in, we'll embed him in, and then go and assault. What are the balance of power? So we, we just about win that. We have the Green Knight, and we only have the Green Knight for what, like, like, I don't know, like, three more turns, I think it is. So let's auto-resolve it. It was a clear victory. Um, and, I mean, was that really worth it? I guess it was. And we'll take on a unit replenishment, actually. That's actually pretty good. We've got a nice blade we can give to one of our people. We can kill this army completely now, and then retreat back. Cool. So let's do that. We're going to lose, you know, a couple units, but we'll take on the unit replenishment, which will probably actually make out... We got another thing as well, and we're more forced march back in. I think we a lot of these units we did lose a unit, but I think a lot of these soldiers actually got more health back. If needs must. And then we'll force march back or force yes. sail back into the city. That will give us replenishment on these units, 
And yeah, we can't get, we can't do that, but that's still fine, I think. Because then they're still going to be another turn until they can... Or they could besiege me from C, but I don't think they, they will do that. Oh yeah, I'm also using a few mods as well. I forgot to mention in the intro. I'm using a better re AI recruitment. So hopefully the AI won't just spam, you know, like 11 units of fucking missiles like they're doing. Because that's just so retarded. Hopefully they'll actually build a normal army. As well as that, I'm using a few graphics mods. And I think that's about it. Just some graphics and a better AI recruitment. So I'm hoping that will be the case. And hero. Wait, I'm confused. Did I... Oh no, yeah, so I guess these do count because I lost a unit of militia. That's cool. So for now, we, this army will just make its way down south. Hopefully it'll make it in time because all I really wanted, like getting some battle pilgrims would be nice, but I just don't think we'll have time. So the quickest way, I think replenishment won't really be an issue. So what, three turns? And we can always recruit some more men on the way. We can afford to get this. Do we? I think we need it in our capital, right? We want to save up money at our capital. Two more turns. We have two more turns. But I also really want to get this as soon as possible. The Manan's dry docks is 12, 1200 like gold coins is crazy. That's so good. I, oh yeah, I also might change this as well. We don't really need happiness in the capital anymore. Let's change the tax rate. An extra 5% tax rate. Well, how much money will that give us? That'll give us an extra 5% there. So what, like an extra 80 gold a turn just from the city? That's good. I'm more than happy to take that. Albert leveled up as well. Nice. We're going to keep on giving him loads of HP. Oh wait, is he level 14? He is level 14. So let's give a Royal Pegasus and then we'll pick up the Hippogriff. And that'll just make Albrick a absolute beast at fighting. Being mounted upon a Hippogriff will give him huge bonuses. I'm hoping these these Stalian agents don't annoy me too much. And obviously we are at war with Marienburg because they did declare war. Hopefully they don't do anything annoying. Nice, they actually retreated back. That's going to leave us a couple more turns to rebuild the army Blessings in a sense. And we can also use our, our Paladin to try and assassinate some people. It's got pretty good, yeah, pretty good, pretty good chance of uh, messing up the enemy. Critical success. So I think we actually killed him. Nice, good Mighty job, man. And he's level 12 as well. That's pretty impressive. So I think we are just continuing down this route. I don't really care about any of these. I think I'm just giving him a shit ton of melee defense. Yeah, we're just going to make him into an absolute monster on the battlefield. We'll give him that 9, and then we'll give him the additional 9 from Blade Shield as well. So he's going to have like 60 melee defense. It's going to be pretty disgusting. Money is still just going up, which is great. I guess I will get up the Iron Mine. That's pretty cheap, and it's going to give us a pretty good bonus. So that's going to be done next turn. We can start getting this stable in our capital. This army is moving. I think we don't have to worry too much. We, yeah, we can just we can avoid the attrition and go this way and land. And then we should still be back here. Obviously, we should get our fourth march here as well. I believe the Green Knight is going in two turns time. But I don't think there's any use I can really use for him. This army is going to march. And it's going to take him two turns to get here. It's going to take this army two turns to, to get here anyway. And I mean, I'm not really scared. I can fight one army. It's just if they send like two armies at me, it's going to be kind of annoying. Can we see what they're recruiting here? See if they're actually recruiting a normal army? Because obviously all these armies that they had beforehand won't be re-recruited. But the, the new armies they build will be you know, like a normal AI recruitment, which will be good. So we could get some of these, but again, that does take up our peasant economy. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty content with where we are right now. We're having a pretty good crusade down in the south. I'm sure the chaos will start to arise fairly soon, I guess. And we can go deal with that after we've dealing with, deal, dealt with Talia and Astalia. I mean, I wouldn't be too pissed just to make peace with Astalia and Talia. Cool, they're giving me loads of turns to, to rebuild my armies. I'm, I'm happy with that. So yeah, you come down here now, man. You'll be able to meet up with Albrecht next turn. His infantry are reforming up. Because I think if we get, what, two no, units of archers, we can probably trade out some of these archers and send them back up north. We need some more cavalry, obviously. But infantry line is looking pretty good. We just need more horses. So I guess we do upgrade this, and maybe I should have done this beforehand. Because then that's three turns. We have to wait until we can start getting some good cavalry. And then we'll just, we'll just you know, smash out our main roster. And we'll also obviously get a stable here. Actually, do we need to get a stable here right now? I'm not going to be recruiting troops anytime soon. So I guess it's probably just smarter if I just save some money and I just use, like, I just save up for that dockyard. Because that would take me, what, like five turns to do? I think maybe that is the smarter move. I'm interested to see what Talia are doing with that full stack there. They're just encamping, which is, I guess, fine with me. As long as, like, are they giving me time to rebuild my army? The Astalian agent's going to come up here and be annoying. I should have used my paladin to try and kill him. Because my paladin seems to be successing. Oh, and he's assaulted the units as well. 
Oh, the Val fulfilled. See you later, Green Knight. You will be missed. You'll be greatly missed. It's annoying that he assaulted these units. Hopefully, we can assassinate him. Let's big money. Critical success again. Oh my god, this Paladin is going in. And then with the, the nine from this one as well, he's going to have so much melee defense. It's going to just be impossible to hit. That is really annoying, though. They hit this. Oh, they assaulted it, but it didn't do any damage. That's funny. Oh, it did a little bit of damage, I guess. Let's give you guys all of that and all of that. Blessings and I guess you can just go back home. I could, could get, get rid of him if I'm honest. I could get rid of him and he would save My me a bunch of money. Yeah, we really need more horses in this army. We, this is very much a, like a whole line army. But still, like with a paladin no. in, that's a full 20 stack. So we can definitely get rid of like this unit of archers, I think. Which we'll do just to save ourselves a bit of money. I think having, what, six units of archers is maybe a bit of an overkill. But we still have two spaces for two more units of Knights of a Realm. Like, so two more horses. So maybe that's a, that's a little bit less. We can probably get rid of some infantry. Maybe like another unit of infantry we can get rid of. But for now, we'll keep them until our stable is done. And we can start getting some more horsemen. Yeah, I think, I think that's a good army comp. Having like four units of knights, which maybe is a little bit too not enough. But we'll, we'll roll with it for now. We'll obviously have a stable at some point. No need now, though. Now we really do need to start working towards the next chivalry level. So we have that green knight in the bank just in case anything bad does happen. Because as you guys saw in that previous one, the, the thing definitely did help. So under the Dark Moon's glare, we could risk the Wrath of the Gods, or we could just pay a bit of gold. We have the money, and we get some leadership, which obviously for my forces is pretty good. And I mean, this army is probably ready to go. One more turn, we can get knights. Two more turns, we might as well just push on them. Try and smash our army. Obviously, you have to be careful of these guys. It's kind of cool that they're encamped outside the town as well, of Estalia. They're like just defending it. That's pretty cool. But we can maybe set up some ambushes or something. Yes. And I guess... What do we do with him? Do we just let him go? Yeah, you go back there into the army. Get your health back. Yeah, I guess we get rid of some... Yeah, we get rid of like a unit of spearmen. Which we might as well do now because by the looks of it, they're not attacking me. So we get rid of that and just get two units of knights errant, I think we get with this one. Yeah, we get some knights errant. And I guess we just get rid of you for extra money. I guess I can always rebuild you when I need you. But we're making three grand a turn now. That's crazy. That is so much cash. So we'll use that to our advantage. We'll, you know, keep on boosting our economy. Oh my god, that place just got raised to the ground. I wonder who did it. I wonder if Leonco uh, was down there and, and took it down. So Tilia are moving their armies again. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to fight them. Our forces are, are pretty strong. Brayherds are coming. Oh shit, that's not good. They could come and burn this. I think they're going to come declare war on me. I'm hoping that the AI recruitment is kind of meant sorted out these armies as well. We can get some more Knights Errant though, which is exactly what we will do. So we'll get two more units. So we have three units of cavalry. Kind of want another unit of cavalry if I'm honest. But I, I guess I'd much rather get rid of a unit of a peasant bowman than infantry. We don't really have a ton of infantry. But these guys with silver experience just look so pretty. Let's let's just get rid of it and get another unit. Four units of cavalry is probably enough uh, to, to do me do my bidding. So we'll, we'll recruit this. And this looks like a pretty good army. It kind of hurt me a bit to get rid of them silver experience. I could have just, I guess, stuck in a different army. I mean, if they attack me, it doesn't matter if I build some troops here. This city is going to go down if they attack me. Like I And I obviously have to worry about Talia as well because Talia are moving in. They can't siege me this turn, though. And we also obviously get the garrison force as well. Yeah, we get the garrison force, which isn't a lot, but these guys are all back up to full strength. If they would have, say, attacked me beforehand, that could have ruined me. Oh, look at my money as well. 66666. Six, 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 six. That's funny. Level this guy up. He is obviously more of my uh, training dude and recruitment dude. Let's go and... Let's go and stick up. Does this do anything later on down the line? I guess we'll just do this to make him more of an annoyance to the enemy. And end the turn. But I want to see, obviously, what Talia do and what these Brayherds do. Brayherds are scaring me more because the Tilian armies we can just destroy. They're not an issue. But these Brayherd armies, whoo, they're going to be a pain in my backside. They're 100% going to burn that city. And there's not really a ton we can do. <gasps> they're coming over with three goddamn stacks. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Um, I'm pretty tempted here not to join this, if I'm honest. It's going to make people hate me, but do we lose chivalry? I don't think we do lose chivalry. 
Because that means they don't come and sack it or come and destroy my province. Yeah, they have three goddamn stacks here. Yeah, you can see these armies. Like, that army's fucked up, but this army is an actual normal army. That's good to see. Oh my lord, that's going to be pretty hard to defeat, if I'm honest. We kind of need to build another army. Do we have a... The lord is back now, good. Yeah, we need to build another army to send down here, because... We don't, we don't have enough infantry to hold this, like, at all. There's no point upgrading this because the city will be under siege. The paladin needs to come out of the city. That is 100% correct because I need him outside the city to be assaulting the armies. You could try and assassinate the lord as well, but I think killing the soldiers is more important. He failed, but getting these soldiers down is the most important thing. We have trebuchets now as well, so we can start hammering their gunners from the get-go. I mean, hopefully that'll make for a pretty interesting battle. So let's recruit a new, let's recruit the Lord back the over here. He can go inside to the place. And he can only really recruit cavalry, which I guess is exactly what he's going to have to do. Is just recruit like a shit ton of horsemen. The riders of Rohan will turn up and save the day. I can't believe I broke my alliance with him. That's hilarious. But I did, like, this army was poised. It could still just declare war on me. But they were poised to, to fight me. And I think we just M turn. Again, I know I am kind of neglecting my home provinces, but they seem pretty chill right now. They don't seem to be, like, having an issue at all. What do you want, Corson? <laughs> Military alliance after I just broke it. I mean, sure, if you're going to pay me. Good old AI being smart. They're like, I know you didn't want to... I mean, I always feel like that's a dumb thing, but it, it forces you to break your alliance. So, yeah, they, they decided to siege me, and if I fight them, they're gonna, we're going to have to fight a big battle. I mean, you're hardly a procrastinator. That's pretty dumb. Ooh, that's nice for 10 turns. So we could get more melee defense and leadership, or we could get melee attack and weapon strength. I think I'm going to get leadership and melee defense, because the leadership is our main issue. I think uh, I think Ark Warhammer pointed it out, that the men-at-arms swordsmen have lower morale than the, the basic beastman unit, which is ridiculous. So I think getting 15 morale is pretty huge, if I'm honest. So let's leave it and get the morale. Yeah, these guys are up to 67 morale, which I think is yeah, it's better than these Empire Swordsmen. So that's great. We will use our advantage to, to stop smashing down these armies. We will hit this army just because it has more people in it. Success, good job. Yeah, slowly start killing these guys. Oh, actually, no, maybe we should be hitting this army. Because this army won't be able to regain strength, whereas this army will. Hmm, that's arguable. How many turns do we have in the siege before we get starved out? It's up here, right? Until we start... That's 13 turns till we surrender. But does it say how many turns until we start taking attrition? No. Do we have to sally out first? Does it say here? I don't think it does. The balance power is not in our favour. I wish I would have got... I well, wish this, I would have like got this mob beforehand. Because, you know, this army is just so much more fun to fight than, say, this army. Or this army. Or this army is an updated one as well. But, like, this army is just so dumb. The amount of missiles is just, just, just ridiculous. Like, I understand an army here and there, but, you know, it just does take the piss a little bit. So we've almost got enough money to get the, the Manan's dry docks, which is exactly what we're looking forward to. How's our cavalry doing? How is our cavalry doing? Lord. The Riders of Rohan? Oh, no, are you joking? Because the buildings there, we can't... I did not know that was a thing. But I guess it is. I guess we're just going to get a... Sh oh, my God, we're going to rinse our money doing this. I guess we have to globally recruit. Because we need to send reinforcements. So I guess we're just going to globally recruit and it's going to fucking hurt me to do this, but let's get some battle pilgrims and some infantry. We can't get any... Well, I guess we can get... We can't even globally recruit cav, can we? Fuck. I mean, I guess this infantry will do, do the deed. That pains me. The amount of money I just spent there for like a very, like almost no reason. So let's continue, continue to level him up as well. More melee defense. Oh, it's annoying as well because he's out the army. I think it's going to be more useful that he's out the army. But it's kind of annoying he is because that means he won't be able to fight in this battle. I know actually, that's a lie. I can stick him in the other army. That's actually a really good point. You want me to join your war against the elves? No! Stop asking. Get the message. I should be able to like say, I'm never going to accept this offer. Go away. Oh my god, they are surrounded. We're getting some pretty good uh, events. So we can either take a, a casualty replenishment, but less income from farms, or more income from or from income from raiding, but less... They're both pretty bad. Because obviously I want my income from farms. So I guess we'll just do armor and weapons. Even though we're not going to be raiding anyone, and we just lose a bit of money. 
kind of a bit silly. So we get, I mean, we might have to just move next turn, if I'm honest, just with an extra three units and a Lord. Because I'm not sure how many turns we get until we start starving out. I'm not sure if it tells me. Oh, yeah, if I hover over it, it will. We have, oh, it's six turns of supplies. I mean, they're more than well, I'd much rather fight a siege battle. Then, like, because the only reason I'm I'm talking about, you know, getting this army up here is because I think they're going to go ahead and just starve me out. So I'm kind of almost happy if they if they want to fight me here. Because three stacks with my towers and my archers and my trebuchets as well. I, I might be able to hold a siege pretty effectively, especially with a garrison as well. So, so what's the question now? Do we try and keep on harassing battle? Do we harass this army? Because this army can't replenish its HP because it's sieging. But I think this army is just so annoying that we want to keep on hitting it. But I think we do more lasting. We kill more lasting damage here. So let's assault this. We failed. That's annoying. Okay, cool. That's fine. I mean, it's a couple of turns. We can always move this army. So yeah, what we'll do is we'll get these troops. We'll move them down a bit so that they're only a turn. They're only like a turn away from reaching that. I mean, I probably could send some soldiers up here as well. I mean, we might as well start working on that. I know we're saving up money for the tri uh, the the dry docks, right? We are indeed. That's exactly what we're doing. The laws of chivalry demand I hear you. What do you want, Leon Corps? Join the war against that? No, I don't want to join your war. They should make it so if you do decline this stuff, you should lose chivalry. Like, it makes sense, right? Because you're being quite dishonorable by not doing it. Ready for duty, some lot of the Lord I, I sent away, right? That's where we already got this Lord, bro. Let's continue to assault the units. No, it failed again. That fucking is annoying as hell, but we keep failing. That really, really is. But this army should have some troops now. Yeah, it does. Not a lot, but I mean, a couple battle pilgrim units could be all we need. So let's make our way down, and then we'll go into recruitment stance and start getting some units as well. That just means that we are in range of like, like a turn of reinforcements. Do you know who I am? Oh, can we not? Oh, we have to be encamped, and I always already moved. That's fine, though, because we still, what, have four or five turns? Five turns. So that's next turn we can get a little closer and encamp. Yeah, that's fine. We've, we've got time. I'm a bit scared if they decide to move up. There's so many goddamn armies down there. That's ridiculous. But, I mean, we can smash them. We just need that secondary army to be up there and keep an eye on these Dalian armies. That is for sure. Next turn, we'll finally be able to get this goddamn dock we've been set up. Oh, maybe not, actually. Money is a little bit tight. My reputation. Because of the amount of stuff we've just been saving for. Bray herds are besieging Carcassonne. That's hilarious. I'm sorry I abandoned you, the Fae. But it'd be kind of nice if they lost that land. Non aggression pack, sure. I'd start trading with the dwarfs. Get some extra money. Talia, you attacking me? What are you doing? Oh, they're, they're breaking the siege? They're, oh, that's a fucking smart from the. Uh, from the enemy they're like causing a blockade around it but what happens here if i attack if i attack here oh beautiful i don't think they join in no they don't join in so they've moved here to blockade me to stop this army from reinforcing but i mean we can just smash their army here which is exactly what we're gonna do we're gonna break the siege and go kill one of their armies that is perfect i mean yeah we could go and assault both of these armies and just leave a smaller crappier army to live i will not obey Okay, this is this is what's gonna happen. If I get a successful assault, I'm going to assault Not these like guys because getting like getting rid of like 400 men is gonna make this job so much Two easier. But if this fails, then we'll go kill the smaller army. It's a success. How many did we kill? Absolutely not. Killed a pretty decent amount, and we have the tribuches no. as well. My strength. We'll get this army involved. Like they're like here, I think. Very well, I go. He leveled up as well. Unfortunately, he can't embed and join us in this fight. Which is a shame, but that's fine, nonetheless. My reputation precedes me. The lady will and then we go fight. We're on a Pegasus. Obviously, they have the advantage, but I mean, I'm feeling pretty confident. As long as we kill all these missiles with our archers and our trebuchets, we have reinforcements. I, I feel like we can hold this, especially with our cavalry. They don't have any horsemen whatsoever. As long as we send a unit of horsemen to go deal with these mortars, which come on the field, I feel like we should be fine. So let's jump into this battle. And this is really, really important. We need to kind of minimize casualties here whilst slaughtering these armies. Because obviously they have that army to the right of us. Tilia have another couple armies as well. And if we can get some, if we can get some victories here, 
uh, that was going to thin out their, their ranks a lot quicker and allow us to replenish and maybe even build up a, set, a proper second army to then see. Okay guys, welcome to the battle replay. So I decided to do a battle replay for this one just because there was a lot going on. I was kind of doing a commentary throughout the actual gameplay whilst I was playing the battle live and I just felt like there was too much going on and I wasn't really doing a good job of talking and playing the battle. So what I've decided to do halfway through the battle, I was like, fuck it, I'll just do the replay. So that does mean that like halfway through the, like, the first like half of the battle went a bit sloppy because I'm trying to do both commentating and uh, and trying to do this pretty hectic battle as we are outnumbered two to one. If we press K and take a look at it, we can see that they have 3,000 troops and we have 2,000. So we're not, you know, it's not two to one, but it's almost two to one, I guess. You know, like almost, almost there. So it's a pretty heavy battle and we're going to have to hope that our trebuchets and our superior missile fire can hold the line as we do have a ton of missiles. All of these archers are going to be do working overtime today. They're going to need to kill so many of the enemy forces obviously we have our set of knights as well so my main plan here i knew the enemy would think they have the advantage and come and attack me obviously having the trebuchets as well is going to be great because these are going to force the enemy forward as well as you can see constantly shooting out these rocks and just laying down the hurt on the enemy line so again we wanted to try and focus down their main gun line as best as possible and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. They are going to be taking some solace by hiding in these trees. That's going to mean I can't really hit them too well as they just make their way through the through the fields and up towards my trebuchet line, which we can just about see right there. That looks great. I, I love getting these cinematic shots like so. But the rest of their line is still advancing. They do have so many guns as well, which is really annoying. Hopefully, after we kill this army, they will start building normal armies with my mod I'm using, the AI recruitment mod. So hopefully when that does occur, we will be able to start uh, actually fighting proper armies instead of like 6 million gun, gun lines. They're going to be opening up on my spearmen, but I'm happy to let them kind of tank their damage on my spearmen because my archers will be more than enough to take care of these guys. They, they shoot so many volleys out so fast that it's just going to be great. We've already taken a few mortar hits as well. But I mean, our entire missile line is shooting hard at the enemy lines. We have a little charge down here where we're going to try our best to try and hit these gunners. We are going to get caught up by the spearmen, but we are going to move forward and we are going to smash these gunners left, right and center. It, oh, it's beautiful. Killing these gunners is like my pawn at the moment. It really, really is. They just cause me so much pain and we just tear through these guys. Holy shit. We just like dissipate the entire unit. I also have an entire unit going after this mortar. I wanted to silence it as soon as possible. So these guys are going to be moving onto the mortar. And the rest of my lines are just going to be holding firm. You also see this little animation here. This is my fire arrows coming in. They're like explosive arrows. They do, like, I guess they do just do a bit more damage to non-armor piercing units. And the volleys are just coming in like a vicious rain. The main line has now started though, the main line of battling, and it's going to be up to my men at arms to hold firm. Their mortars are still firing some pretty good hits, so we'll go in slow-mo just to, to really uh, get the gloriousness of this battle. So their mortars are still firing some pretty big hits at the back of my line, but I'm hoping with Albrecht being here, he'll be more than okay to deal with them. Obviously we're moving on our foot, uh, foot squires as well, they should be a great help. Albrecht is fighting the enemy lord, he's, yeah, he's right there, so Albrecht hopefully on his pegasus can take down the enemy lord, which would be great. The rest of our archers are still shooting, something I really need to do and I didn't do in this battle, which I kind of came to a conclusion of, is I really need to put all my archers on guard mode. Too often, they, when they manage to rout the enemy unit, the enemy unit will run away and then my men will follow, uh, follow the unit and then get caught up in melee, so I really, really need to focus on the next battle at putting all my archers into guard mode for sure. If we go look on this left flank, we can see that my, my cavalrymen are trying to get away from the spearmen, the Empire Spears, which are pushing up. The, my cavalry are just pulling out of there. We don't want to engage too heavily. Oh, we also have a beautiful charge on the crossbowmen, though. Look at that! Look at that! They're just flying down the hill. That's amazing. They're being sent into the dark abyss. That is beautiful right there. <laughs> and then we have our knights errant just marching forward. That is bloody beautiful. Absolutely great. So yeah, we just destroy these cavalry of these crossbowmen, which is again the main thing we need to do is focus these guys down. However, there is still an entire another army for us to deal with. Don't get that wrong. We still have to kill an entire another enemy army, so we'll go ahead and click play. We're doing a great job here at killing their lord, however, Albrecht is taking a bit of damage. I'm not really sure what's doing the damage to him. Maybe it's their guns down here. I've kind of almost forgotten about this unit, and this could be the, the unit doing damage, but I feel like they're hitting my spearmen up here. I'm not really too sure. Maybe it is just their, their captain doing great damage. I think we are going to rout him uh, as he tries to get away from Albrecht. Albrecht's going to lunge forward and try his best to stop that. 
The main battle line is looking great. My men at arms. Again, my men at arms with the leadership buff we have as the arrows go out as well. With the leadership buff, like, they're actually pretty decent. They don't have the best melee attack or defense, but they're okay. And having, de like, a higher leadership is great news. This entire line of archers, as I said, is just working uh, overtime, just destroying anything over on that side. And the soldiers are trying their best to, to form up and get their ranks, uh, ranks effectively sorted. More archers up here as well, shooting the gunners. Again, we just want to try and kill the gunners as quickly as possible. Killing the gunners will make think, my life much easier. My trebuchets are now opening up on their, on their swordsmen as they push up. They also have a captain here. Oh yeah, I also started to put down some of my, my trident spells as well. That one ripped through this. I get an amazing trident spell towards the end of the battle, which we'll have to see. It literally is just bloody beautiful. Trebuchet is still going out. Not doing the best in the world, but still doing pretty decently. We've got cavalry coming in for these gunners. The rest of our cavalry, if we press K, we can see it's just kind of uh, wrapping around, trying to find targets to hit. We've got some gunners over here, which I'm kind of trying to bait out and just let my archers shoot them to pieces. Their infantry line is now charging upon my infantry line, though. So we do have to be careful and obviously bring back these archers, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing just in the nick of time. So these archers are going to fall back through the main ranks. And then my soldiers are going to push up against their spearmen and they're the supporting swordsmen that come. Oh, we just missed a charge, but the knights there and just tore through this unit of gunners. Again, that's exactly what we need to happen. You can see that these, these cavalrymen are going for these gunners. That's basically just all my forces. My main line just holds for the rest of my force to just keep on pushing them. The main line is looking pretty good right now, like for me. I'm happy with how's it, how it's going. My reinforcements have just turned up as well. And they are currently engaging the Empire Swords on this far left flank. We've got the Battle Pilgrims fighting sturdily against the Empire's, Empire Swords. And I think these Battle Pilgrims are a match for the Empire Swords. Which is kind of depressing to think that just my Battle Pilgrims are just about a match for the basic Empire Swords. But, I mean, they do pretty decently and hopefully they'll hold the line. I believe they've also got a unit of men-at-arms back here fighting as well. And again, these guys are only against Empire Spearmen, so, yeah, they're going to hold. They're not, no, none of them are going to really beat on each other too badly. The cavalry comes smashing in here. The archer fire overhead. I think we may have just missed my trident. I don't think I have actually. Because what happens is I tried them, yeah, I tried them this entire block. And then I have cavalry smashing it in the back as well at the exact same time. See my fire arrow is going out as well. I mean my line is holding, which is great. Like the fact that my line's holding, I can't ask for more. The foot squad is doing a great job, and I am slowly starting to win on this right flank. Yeah, the right flank is pretty much completely won. I'm focusing down over here with my catapult. It's doing a great job with the enemy lord or the allied lord helping me out. I believe Albrecht has gone in as well. Yeah, Albrecht has gone in. And I think I, I line up my cavalry in a second now. Yeah, all my cavalry is coming around the flank now to start hitting this. So let's watch this. Let's watch this trident, uh, this trident ability come in. I believe it's exactly straight down this line. I have the cavalry hitting in hard just after... Let's see the damage that I inflict. Here we go. That rips directly through the line. And then we have the knights come flying in and just demolish the line. That is just, it was just such good, a good combo. That will absolutely rinse their morale. Like, really destroy them. Because the trident spell does do morale damage as well. And if we press K, we can really see that, yeah, all their morale is starting to drop. Albrecht is going to continue to chase down some enemy units. And all this cavalry is going to continue to come in. So for the next, like, minute, we're just going to hammer and anvil the hell out of these enemy lines as best as we can. We're also going to start shooting the side of this unit as well. Because you see my men are starting to, to drop out a little bit. Another beautiful charge there against the Empire Swords. And then all these archers are going to start reforming and hitting the side of these spearmen. Yeah, you can see the shots are starting to come in now. We also have some more cavalry, which could cause some friendly fire. But I feel like it's worth it just to try and break them. Because again, another vicious cavalry charge. I feel like the cavalry impacts of Bretonia are just amazing. They really are. Probably one of my favorite parts of the DLC, if I'm honest. And we'll get down and into the battle here. Do have some peasant archers up here. This is what I'm saying. I need to have my archers on guard mode. I think we're going to be routing a large portion of the enemy force. And I think that's going to be all she wrote for this battle. If I'm honest, I think I do decide to chase the air. There we go. I do decide to chase down the enemy forces for like the next minute or two. Just because, again, I want to kill as many as possible. As, you know, leaving these soldiers. There are still like, what, three stacks on the field if I don't kill many of these guys. So I definitely want to kill you know, these armies. I want to army wipe them if I can. 
So if we look at the battle results, we can see that Albert got 86 kills. That's great. The foot squad is doing really good. And my men, my infantry did like really surprisingly well. So I'm definitely proud of them. Obviously, the MVPs of the battle were the Knights Errant and the Knights of the Realm, which I think I actually unfortunately do lose, which maybe was a bit of a misplay on my part. The artillery doing great in the archers. Overall, my army did very impressive. A battle pilgrims coming in and helping out as well. So overall, a really, really solid victory. And the enemy didn't really get a chance to use their mass gunners, which is great. So we absolutely absolutely smashed their army that was really really good we managed to almost well we annihilated the first army and the second army is pretty much destroyed as well we'll obviously take on the replenishment to give us a bit of an advantage we scattered their armies to the wind which is great oh crown of commands actually kind of nice because it means that the unit can become unbreakable and our army gains the blessing of the lady i swear we already have the blessing of the lady when has our been destroyed I never, I always thought we had that. I thought we started off with it and we, I guess we must have lost it. When did he ever retreat from battle? I don't remember doing that, but I, mean, I guess I must have. He also leveled up, which does mean we do get our Hippogriff now. That is awesome. I can't wait to use that bad boy in battle. I'm looking forward to that. Do we get to see it on the campaign map as well? We do indeed. Whoa, that thing looks mighty. Obviously, next to our Paladin as well, who's oh no, just chilling there. Glory. But yeah, the Hippogriff looks great. So we want to go kill one of these armies. I think this army to the left is more important. So let's go smash this one. Auto resolve it, obviously. Uh, take on the replenishment. Superior attacker. Oh my god. Aura size when attacking plus 50% and leadership when attacking. That is great. That is really, really good. But leadership is going to be so good. It's going to make these units have like 80 leadership with obviously the buff that we have for another next seven turns. So I think now we force march back to the, the city. Leaving. My Unfortunately, I don't think we'd be able to win an auto. Oh, actually, yeah, we would My easily be able to win an auto resolve here, right? Yours. Yeah, easily. Cool, so let's do that. This army actually really came in handy uh, in that Moving battle out. for sure. And he gets into ward safe as well. I'll go ahead and sort out all these all these things at some point in the future. Uh, I do want to get give him a war horse because he did take ages to come over him during that battle. So we'll bring him down again. Our paladin obviously can't be used, but yeah, that's going to smash Talian armies back. And hopefully, actually, we've killed all their just, like crappy armies now as well. And we gain a ton of money from fighting them. So we can now finally upgrade our port. It's going to take six turns, but I mean, once it's done, we will be in the money for sure. Make an extra 600 gold every single, single turn. As well as that, our water pumps are almost done as well, which gives us more peasants. I think each, each region gives us an extra peasant, so we'll be able to recruit like another five peasant soldiers, which is, again great news so then we end the turn see how this turns out see what the enemy do and we'll probably wrap up the episode somewhat somewhat soon just you know a couple more turns what's going on girl <laughs> no thank you oh she's gonna get wrecked them very herds are gonna rip her a new one like they're literally there's two full stacks out there she needs support but i ain't sending nothing Nice, that's pretty good as well. Improve happiness and our water pumps are done. So we can now actually, yeah, have another five units. That's great. An extra five units in these armies. I'm more than happy to take that. We can take some more infantry. I think what we will do is we'll just put some battle pilgrims in this army. Yeah, we'll just stick two units of battle pilgrims in there. Blessings of we did. The oh, we lost the, the knight. Uh, yeah, in that battle, I really wasn't very good because halfway through the battle, I think I'll mention it in the in the battle replay. I decided just all of a sudden that I wanted to do a battle replay, so I was like, yeah, actually, fuck it. So like half the battle, I'm talking and commentating, and because of that, I'm not really doing a lot, uh, like a lot of good tactics. But these battle pilgrims in the army are gonna really help out, like help out Blessings a ton. Blessings of the lady be upon you. So let's use our paladin to go, yeah, look, they actually got a nice army. It's going to make these battles so much more fun than having to deal with, like, 19 units of gunners. Like, yeah, look at that. I mean, that's a bit extreme. Like, they should obviously have some missile units. But, I mean, it's still fun to have infantry battles than anything else. And we do obviously still have to be careful. They could easily move in with three stacks again. And we're going to have to deal with that. I think for sure we have to start building more units. Because I feel like they're just going to have an endless stream. Obviously, we can kill them quicker than they can recruit. But we can't let them build up, uh, like, lots of troops. So it would be ideal, I guess, to smash that army now if we were in range, which we're not. Like, it would be ideal if we were in range to hit their army. So that's just one army dealt with and we can deal with the other ones. Because this army's not going to be too difficult to kill. It's a lot of infantry, which will be hard. But, I mean, our missiles and our cavalry should be enough to smash them. 
Okay, cool. I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying this series so far. If you are still enjoying this, make sure to drop a like and a comment. I'm not sure how much longer we're going to continue the series on. Obviously, we're only on, what, episode 6? So, we've still got, like, a good at least another 5 more episodes in, at least. But I think once I consolidate the whole of Bretonia, I've taken the Crusades down to the south. Maybe I will call it an end for this campaign. I don't know. It depends how much you guys are enjoying this. And your best way to show support is by dropping a like and a comment. So, I guess I'll see you guys next time. And fish out.